Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. Today we will start a new module, module number 4. This module is on mainly on watershed modeling. So, the topics covered in this module are standard modeling approaches and classifications, system concepts for watershed modeling, overall description of different hydrological processes, modeling of rainfall, runoff process, subsurface flows and groundwater flow. So, in this module there will be about 7 lectures and uh, today in lecture number 12 we will discuss in this module watershed characteristics. So, in lecture number 12 watershed characteristics we will discuss some of the topics mainly on watershed characteristics, geometric representation of watersheds, linear aspects, aerial aspects, relief aspects, drainage and discharge. Some of the important keywords for today's lecture, watershed characteristics, geometric representation, drainage, linear aerial relief aspects. So, we have already discussed about the watershed characteristics in the first lecture itself when we were discussing about the introduction or introductory aspects on watershed and its management. So, we have seen that uh, there are when we deal with uh, watershed management, we have to deal with the land, we have to deal with the water and also we have to deal with various resources within the watershed. So, there are number of important characteristics which are to be considered while dealing with uh, watershed modeling or say watershed management. So, some of the important characteristics I have listed here. So, this includes the size of the watershed. So, we had a brief discussion about the size in the introductory lecture itself. Then shape of the watershed, whether what kind of shape is, whether it is say elongated shape or broad type shape. Then physiography of the watershed. So, how it is say whether the, 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 the whatever the various physiographic features within the watershed. Then climate like the rainfall, the um, say humidity or temperature and various aspects. Then the drainage pattern within the watershed, so, so that the flow or the runoff will be according to accordingly it will vary. Then land use, so what kind of land use is there within the watershed, whether it is forested or whether it is agriculture or whether it is uh, say scrub land, so like that. Then vegetation, so what kind of vegetation whether it is grass, grassland like this or small small trees like this. Then geology and soils, so the say various hydrological processes taking place within the watershed like uh, infiltration and uh, various other parameters depends upon the geology and soils of the watershed. Then hydrology, so that is already within the uh, climate aspects like uh, rainfall to runoff and various other hydrological processes. Then hydrogeology, so like groundwater and then uh, infiltration and other parameters and then of course, the socio-economics. So, the when we are dealing with watershed management, so what is the nature of the people living in that watershed area and what is their economical background, so that what kind of works they are doing or what kind of land use are there within that watershed. So, there are number of characteristics which we have to identify and then quantify, uh, so that many of these uh, parameters we utilize especially when we say watershed modeling or when we go for watershed management. So, this watershed characteristics as I already mentioned earlier, so this watershed characteristics indicate the biophysical and socio-economic features prevalence in a watershed. So, the as we have seen various characteristics are there, so that these characteristics mainly indicate what is the physical nature of the watershed, what are the biological natures, nature of the watershed and then what are the say hydrogeological nature of the watershed and the socio-economical features which are prevalent within the watershed. So, as I mentioned we have to identify this important watershed, uh, watershed characteristics 
and uh, then we have to say many of the times when we go for watershed modeling or management, we have to quantify uh, so that uh, some values for particular parameters like uh, area of the watershed, so length of the channel or the, the slope or those specific characteristics we may have to give it in uh, say while doing modeling or while doing the, the say, say making the plans for uh, watershed management. We have seen many characteristics as far as watershed is concerned. So, this characteristics we can broadly classify or categorized into the climate related uh, characteristics, geology and physiography related characteristics, soil related characteristics, land use and cover conditions, land use land cover conditions, then watershed hydrology and then socio-economic features of the watershed. So, we have seen many parameters in the last slide. So, that those parameters and many other parameters also we can classify into say about uh, say 6 classes like a climate geology, physiography, soils, land use and land cover, watershed hydrology and socio-economical features of the watershed. So, now let us see what are the important characteristics within each of these classifications or the each of these groups. So, if you consider climate, so as we have seen earlier, so when we deal with the watershed management or when we are going for watershed modeling, so the important aspect is water availability within the watersheds and then also various climatological parameters like wind, wind velocity or the temperature or the humidity like that. So, the climate parameters mainly include the precipitation. So, the precip through precipitation or rainfall we the, there will be runoff and that will be the source of water as far as the watershed is concerned. And then with respect to temperature, so temperature is another important climate parameter. So, with respect to the temperature, so there will be uh, say, say we have to uh, while uh, modeling the watershed we have to quantify many parameters. So, like evaporation, then evapotranspiration and then other climate parameters include wind, relative humidity etcetera. Now, if you consider the physiography of the watershed, then we can classify say the watershed or the as per the characteristics of the watershed, we have we can say deal with respect to the size and shape of the watershed. So, what is the size whether it is a major watershed or is it is a sub watershed or it is a minor watershed or micro watershed like that with respect to size and then what is the shape of the watershed. So, especially shape is very important since according to the shape the runoff characteristics within the watershed will change. Then another important physiographical parameter is elevation. So, you can see that uh, the watershed uh, say in the within the watershed the the elevation or the uh, the various the slope is changing from one location to another location. So, the elevation according to elevation we can identify the contours of the watershed and then uh, we can uh, say see various parameters related to that. And then slope and aspects. So, slope is of course, with respect to the elevation aspect uh, the of the various points within the watershed. Then aspect means it is it can be linear aspects, aerial aspects or the 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 uh, say the height related aspects. So, these details we will be discussing later. Then another important uh, characteristics is related is geology. So, like uh, the drainage features then pattern density etcetera. Then uh, what kind of rock is there within the watershed say what is the nature of the rock whether it is igne igneous then sedimentary or metamorphic what kind of rock is there. So, like that say geological parameters are also uh, very important when we deal with the watershed modeling or related to watershed management. Now, as far as soils are concerned say within the watershed say what is the depth of the soil. So, that is very important since accordingly so the agricultural activities or accordingly the uh, the uh, say uh, the infiltration parameters that you vary. Then what is the type of soil whether it is sandy type soil or um, the loamy type or the clay type what kind of soil. Then soil infiltration capacity. So, we discussed earlier that when say rainfall to runoff process say infiltration is one of the important 
parameter which is controlling the runoff process. So, uh, we have to identify the, the infiltration capacity of the soil within the watersheds. Then soil erosiveness. So, we have already seen earlier the erosion and sedimentation problems uh, within a watershed. So, uh, say depending upon the nature of soil and other parameters, the, the there will be more or less or say what type of erosion problems can be there within the watershed. And then finally, the land use and land cover conditions. So, land use uh, say accordingly the say for example, many parameters like mining reference coefficients or the, the agricultural pattern all those things will be according to the uh, land use and land cover. So, land use types like forest, grasslands, agricultural lands, urban lands, etcetera. Then the ownership pattern say the land is concerned whether it is government lands, private lands, industrial lands. So, accordingly say the various uh, things what we can do within the watershed it will vary. Then forest land conditions whether it is major type of forest or we say what kind of whether thick forest or thin forest. Then range land condition and types, then agriculture practices within the watershed. Then say whether there is there are roads in the watershed like road network and what are the conditions of that road. Then recreational like resort whether the watershed area is used for resort purpose, wildlife, fish resources etcetera. So, these are some of the important aspects or important characteristics which we have to consider as far as land use and land cover conditions are concerned. Then as far as watershed hydrology is concerned say another important classi classification watershed hydrology. So, we have to see with respect to the hydrological aspects of the area. So, what are the erosion conditions along streams you can see that this stream is set too much error on the banks. So, so that accordingly the, the various uh, conditions within the watershed will vary and then whether say with respect to rainfall whether there are any flooding problems within the watershed and how much is the quantity of say runoff taking place within a stream like this. So, quantity and quality. So, these are some of the important characteristics which we have to consider as far as watershed hydrology is concerned. Then finally, the socio-economic features of the watersheds. So, uh, as far as socio-economic features are concerned say uh, like uh, water use and needs say, say as far as the people living in, in the watershed water is concerned like water, what are the sources of water, then what are the uses of the water like domestic use or irrigation or industrial or for power per generation purpose etcetera. Then uh, water use problems. So, when the with respect to the usage of water within the uh, watershed whether uh, say with respect to the, the conditions available within the watershed whether there can be problems of erosion or flooding or siltation. Then uh, as far as water supply uh, for the, 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 the domestic supply or industrial supply then uh, the water is the condition of the, the, the quality of the water. So, like water quality. Then another important aspect is we, which we have to deal always is the economical aspects. So, that means the income generation activities associated within the watershed. So, as we have discussed earlier in any of the watershed management programs the, the so economical status of the people or the income generation uh, facilities available within the watershed whether through it may be through agricultural activities or it is through various mining activities or whatever kind of activities which are which are possible within the watershed. So, that is also an important uh, characteristics like economic characteristics which we have to consider uh, when we go for a watershed management or watershed uh, modeling. So, now, uh, say with respect to the various uh, watershed characteristics which we have considered. So, now uh, say some of the important characteristics we will be discussing in detail. Since some of say these characteristics they are very important especially when we go for watershed modeling. Say modeling means it can be rainfall to runoff modeling or groundwater modeling or uh, many of the other processes what are taking place within the watershed. So, let us have a brief look into the important watershed characteristics, what are their definitions and uh, what way we will be utilizing as far as the watershed modeling is concerned. So, first one is 
the drainage area of the watersheds. So, as far as a watershed is concerned, the area of the total area of the watershed is uh, most important factor. So, the drainage area is the most important uh, as far as the hydrological design is concerned when we deal with especially with uh, various uh, so land is, the, is one of the resource and then with respect to water also we have to deal with uh, how much is the area uh, of the watershed so called uh, drainage area. So, this drainage area uh, reflects the volume of water generated from the rainfall. So, if say for example, if 100 mm of rainfall takes place within a watershed. So, we can identify how much is the volume of water available with respect to this 100 mm rainfall by considering the drainage area. So, normally what we can do the volume of water available for runoff may be assumed as product of rainfall depth and the drainage area. So, this is a simple calculation, uh, but that may not be so accurate, but say generally we can take it as the depth of the the so the rainfall or depth of water available multiplied by the drainage area that will be the volume of water available for runoff uh, within the uh, watershed. Of course, various losses will be there. So, that we have to consider uh, with respect to the rainfall available or so called excess rainfall. Then another important uh, characteristics which we have to consider especially in watershed modeling is so called watershed length. So, watershed length is defined as the distance measured along the main channel from the watershed outlet to the basin divide. So, you can see that if this is the watershed which we consider here. So, here is the, the basin divide and if somewhere here is the, uh, the watershed outlet then. So, this is the length say that from the watershed divide to the outlet. So, that is the definition of the uh, watershed length. So, you can see that this watershed length increases as the drainage increases. So, that is obvious when the drainage increases the watershed length also increases. So, this is one of the important aspects as far as the hydrologic computations are concerned since the time of concentration and then runoff generation depends upon the uh, watershed length. Then this uh, watershed length L is measured along the principal flow path. So, if this is the main channel available within the watershed. So, this here or in this watershed this is the main channel then uh, say the watershed length is measured along the principal uh, flow path. So, while do while going for watershed modeling this drainage area A and watershed length L both measures of watershed size. So, say what is the watershed size? So, that depends upon the drainage area and the watershed length. So, this a and L they may reflect the different aspects of the size of the watershed. So, as we, we have discussed A indicate the potential for rainfall to provide a, the say corresponding volume of water and L is used in computing the time parameter. So, as I mentioned time of concentration or the time required for water to reach from the divide water divide to the water outlet. So, it is a measure of travel time of water through a watershed. So, two important uh, parameters as far as the watershed modeling is concerned, these parameters are drainage area and the watershed length. Then some other important parameters like a uh, watershed slope. So, the slope according to the slope say when the precipitation takes place the runoff will be evolved according to the watershed slope. So, the flood magnitudes reflect the momentum of the runoff. So, slope is an important factor in the momentum. So, according to the slope of the so you can see that depending upon what is the slope. So, here you can see that uh, there is steep slope as far as this watershed is there concerns. So, according to the slope the there will be more momentum as far as the runoff is concerned and the watershed slope reflects the rate of change of elevation with respect to distance along the principal flow path. So, for the watershed concerns if this is the principal flow path. So, accordingly so the watershed slope reflects the rate of change of elevation. So, the slope s is equal to delta E by L where delta E is the difference in elevation that means between end points of the principal flow path and L is the hydrologic length of the 
flow path. So, if this is our concerned watershed, so S can be defined as say if this is our main channel. So, here what is the height here and what is the outlet height and then we can identify what is the difference in elevation between these two points and then we can identify what is the hydrologic length. So, slope will be watershed slope will be delta E by L. Then another important characteristics is watershed shape. So, watershed shape have an infinite say as far as watershed shape is concerned there can be infinite variety of shapes. It can be broad type or elongated type or somewhat circular type. So, there can be number of types of shapes and the shape sus supposedly reflects the way that runoff will bunge up at the outlet. So, you can see that if there is a narrow shaped watershed then the runoff will be much much uh, say it will take in small period of time, but if it is a broad type watershed like this. So, there it, see, it need more time to for that all this say the runoff will be bunging up at the outlet. The watershed shape is an important parameter. So, say for example, a circular shaped watershed would result in the runoff from various parts of the watershed reaching outlet at the same time. So, the shape is very important whether it is say somewhat circular type or the broad type or rectangular type or a square type or narrow elongated type. So, accordingly the various especially when we are going for watershed modeling. So, accordingly the, the runoff process the, the, the say for example, time of concentration will vary or say the, the total runoff will vary according to the, the shape of the watershed. So, now as far as the, the watershed shape is concerned there are number of important parameters which we have to consider. So, basin shape and uh, related watershed parameters. So, the watershed parameters that reflect the basin shape in groups the length to the center of area. So, that is the distance say in miles or kilometers measured along the main channel from the basin outlet to the point on the main channel opposite the center of area. So, this is the definition as far as length to the center of area of the watershed is concerned. So, this uh, depicts one of the, the, the character the parameter as far as the basin shape is concerned. Then another important uh, parameter is shape factor. So, we can define the shape factor as L into L C A to the power 0 0.3, where L is the uh, length of the watershed in miles and L C A is the, the length of center of area. So, as, as uh, uh, shown here, so shape factor is equal to L into L C A to the power 0 0.3. Now, another important aspect is the uh, circulatory ratio. So, the circulatory ratio is the uh, as far as basin shape is concerned circulatory ratio means the ratio of basin area to the area of circle having equal perimeter as the perimeter of uh, drainage basin. So, that means circulatory ratio is defined as the ratio of uh, the basin area A u divided by the area of a circle which has equal perimeter as the perimeter of the drainage basin. So, generally depending upon the watershed the circulatory ratio can vary from 0 0.6 to uh, 0 0.7. Then as far as shape is concerned another important uh, say parameter is so called the elongation ratio. So, as I mentioned with this, this shows whether what is the, the shape like L, say narrow type or broad type uh, watershed. So, the elongation ratio it is a ratio of the diameter of a circle uh, say D C having same area as the basin to the maximum basin length. So, the elongation ratio R L is equal to D C by L B M where D C is the uh, diameter of a circle having same area and then uh, L, L B M is the maximum uh, basin length. So, as far as the basin shape is concerned these uh, four important factors or four important parameters like uh, length of the center of area, then shape factor, circulatory ratio and the elongation uh, ratio. So, now uh, again uh, let us come back to some of the other important watershed characteristics or say called watershed factors. So, as we can see if you go to any of the watershed we can see that say when we go from one location of the watershed to another location the 
various uh, features or the various geographical or physiographical all these features are varying from one location to another location. So, you can see that to say this is a watershed say here you can see the say like uh, the, the relief is changing, the slope is changing then uh, say the land use is changing. So, all the parameters are changing from one location to another location and then in the direction wise also. So, that is why we can say that uh, any of the watersheds is say as when we go for watershed modeling, watershed we have to consider as highly heterogeneous and anisotropic. So, as far as any parameter is concerned all these parameters will be varying from one location to another location in the, in the length wise or any location wise. So, now like uh, say, say other parameters like land cover. So, you can see that this watershed. So, here so grass is there then other location uh, say plants are there or some other location trees are there. So, the land cover is changing and the land use is concerned say some of the area may be covered by the, the agricultural land, some of the area may be uh, forest land. So, according to the land use will be varying. And when especially when we go for watershed modeling, one of the important aspects in a scientific modeling is we what we have to consider is the roughness of the area. Say when we are transforming the rainfall to runoff, various hydrological process which we have to consider. So, when we go for physical modeling, the runoff depends upon the, the, uh, the roughness of the watershed. So, this roughness can vary according to the various parameters like land cover, land use and the type of soil. And then as far as soil is concerned some of the important soil characteristics like a texture of the soil, how is the texture, then what is the soil structure, then uh, say of course, the, the as far as uh, runoff is concerned how is the soil moisture. And then uh, especially when we go for various modeling say we can classify the so various so soil, soil type within the watershed into various group. So, that uh, that kind of classification we call it as so hydrological soil groups. So, this aspect we will be discussing in, in some later lectures. So, hydrological soil groups accordingly uh, we can identify uh, various parameters uh, like um, say the initial soil moisture or the hydraulic conductivity as far as the soil is concerned. So, like that number of soil characteristics uh, which we have to deal as far as the, the watershed is uh, concerned. Now, again coming back to the, the uh, say watershed is concerned the cha channels within the that means the drainage or the channels within the watershed is uh, say very important in watershed modeling. So, the channel geomorphology so is one of the important aspect which we have to consider. So, channel, ge channel geomorphology is concerned say some of the important aspect which we have to consider include channel length. So, this is as we already discussed earlier. So, this channel length is used frequently in hydrological co computations. So, when we uh, say we have to identify what will be the runoff available at the outlet of the watershed, we have to see what is the length, channel length. So, accordingly uh, we will be routing the flow what is happening as far as the, the, uh, the rainfall to runoff within the watershed. Then the distance measured along the main channel from the watershed outlet to the end of the channel that is the channel length as far as say as we discussed. So, this is channel length is the distance measured along the main channel from the watershed outlet to the end of the channel. Then channel slope, channel slope is uh, equal to delta E z by L c where delta E z is the difference in elevation between the points defining the upper and lower ends of the channel and uh, L c is the length of the channel between the same two points. So, if this is the channel, so from one end to the other end what is the length and what is the elevation difference. So, from that we can calculate the channel slope and uh, most of the watershed due to the heterogeneity channel slope will be keep on changing. If the channel slope is keep on changing uh, from one point to another point then uh, say we can take somewhat an average of the channel slope. So, if the channel slope is not uniform a weighted slope may provide an index that reflects effect of slope on the hydrological response of the watershed. So, as I mentioned uh, say when the rainfall runoff process taking place. So, this we have to route the flow and then uh, so we have to also consider the channel slope. So, 
the let's say how much is the hydraulic response that depends upon the uh, channel uh, slope. Now, uh, say when we deal with the watershed modeling, uh, we have to say represent the various features within the watershed uh, by uh, considering uh, the, the, the say the, the length aspect or the aerial aspects and then the elevation aspects like that. So, the geometric representation of uh, watershed uh, is uh, very important in watershed modeling. So, there are basically two concepts uh, generally are used as far as the geometric representation is concerned. The first one is called a grid method and the second one is called a conceptual method. So, both of these methods uh, we will discuss in detail. So, in the grid method what we do? So, we generate so as far as the watershed area is concerned if we know the boundary of the watershed. So, what we can do? We can uh, say uh, put the watershed boundary uh, say, say within a rectangular or triangular grids. So, in the grid method we represent the grid just, just, just like a triangular grid or rectangular grid. So, the stream channel system. So, say as we have seen the, the, the watershed modeling is concerned we have to consider the overland type flow and the channel type flow. So, the stream channel system uh, based upon the slope channel dimensions and conditions uh, we have to deal. So, uh, say in the grid we can use the triangle or rectangular grid and uh, the flow in elemental areas say like if this is the, the rectangle grid which we consider. So, the flow uh, from one element to other element travel to channel and finally, to the watershed outlet. So, if this is the watershed outlet which we consider. So, we can consider grid like uh, represented here and then the, the, the flow as is concerned the flow travels uh, say one grid to another grid and to finally, to an adjacent channel and finally, to the outlet of the uh, watershed. So, as I mentioned say watershed is concerned we have to the see the overland flow and the channel flow. So, the overland flow uh, and channel flow uh, mainly overland flow we can consider with respect to the either rectangle grids or triangle grids and these grids will be connected to the to the, uh, the, the channel channel generally channel flow we consider as one dimensional flow and overland flow uh, either we can consider as one, one dimensional strip type flow or two dimensional flow. So, this overland flow uh, strips will be connected to the channel flow uh, uh, and so that we can identify say when the, uh, the rainfall runoff process taking place we can route the flow from say one overland strip to another strip. Uh, and then that will be joining to a stream and uh, through the stream we can finally, route the flow to the, the outlet of the uh, watershed. So, uh, the various steps which we have to consider as far as the geometry representation uh, is concerned the steps are listed here. So, uh, we can consider a rectangular grid system say like you can see that uh, this is if this is the outlet of the watershed. So, this is a rectangular system. Uh, which we can consider. So, a rectangle grid system is superimposed on topographic map of the watershed. So, we can get the topographic map of the watershed from which we can identify the, the boundaries of the watershed. So, then we can superimpose uh, on a uh, grid system like this and the grid size uh, say the watershed boundaries of the uh, of channels are approximated by grid segments. So, what is the grid segment accordingly we can approximate uh, the boundaries of the watershed. You can see that uh, since when we consider especially rect rectangle grid system we cannot uh, exactly represent the, the, the variation of the, the, uh, the boundary of the watershed. So, we can approximate it, but if we use triangular grid then we can uh, better way we can represent the irregular boundaries as far as the watershed is concerned. Then, uh, say overland units are uh, grid units inside uh, watershed boundaries and channel units uh, may create uh, grid units. You can see that. So, this can be a ch channel unit which is going to the outlet of the watershed and these are all the overland uh, units. So, that will be slowly merging to the coming to the, the uh, say channel uh, segment is concerned. So, if this is the main channel, so you can see that various small small channel will be there and that will be coming under this grids and that will be finally, joining to the uh, main channel.
So, the principal flow direction of each overland flow is determined by the landscape. So, you can see that the landscape say what is a landscape like what is the slope, what is the size of the watershed, what is the shape of the watershed accordingly the principal flow direction will uh, vary and the water is used to flow in the direction of land slope to next overland flow unit or adjacent channel. So, we will be considering cascade type flow conditions and the uh, say so that uh, this cascade of the overland flow will be joining the to the channel. So, that uh, the so the, in, in the grid representation uh, so we have already seen earlier grid method the grid method uh, say we, we can uh, have the following these steps as far as the geometric representation uh, is concerned. So, as I mentioned if this is our watershed so the overland flow is concerned we consider as the, the various grids say either one dimensional or two dimensional grids is one dimensional strips and in two dimensional grids. So, these grids you can see that it will be like this it will be keep on joining to the important channels. So, this is represents channel is represented as a one dimensional uh, uh, say like this and then the overland flow is considered as an element like this either in two dimension or one dimension and this will be joining. So, this is the way we do it in the, the representation as far as the grid method is concerned. Now, the next one is the conceptual uh, methods. So, in the conceptual methods watershed geometry is defined using a network of uh, various elemental sectors like a plane, triangular section, converging section, diverging section uh, and the of course, the channel. Say for example, if this is the watershed then you can see that if this is the channel is represents and then we can consider various planes then uh, sometimes triangular shapes or the converging this is converging or diverging like that. And uh, we can when we join all these uh, say uh, the sectors like a plane triangular or whatever the sectors which we consider then when we join together we have the complete uh, watershed. So, the plane is defined by the length and width and uh, that can be either horizontal or inclined and then uh, the said it is defined by the slope length and area. So, like that. So, then as far as the converging section is concerned you can see that uh, depending upon the, the variation of the shape of the watershed and the slope uh, we, we may use converging section or diverging section and then uh, many many times it will be better to use triangle elements. So, that you can easily represent the, the irregular shape of the uh, watershed. And then as far as channel element is concerned uh, the by hydraulic geometry like cross sectional area, wetted perimeter, hydraulic radius, width etcetera uh, we will be considering as far as the channel element is concerned. So, as far as this watershed is concerned this is the, the ch channel. So, we will be considering the like uh, what is the cross sectional area of this channel and what is the wetted perimeter, hydraulic radius, width etcetera and the bed profile. So, the, the channel section is concerned it can be either rectangular section as usual rectangular, trapezoidal, parabolic or semicircular or triangular section. So, like that various sections are possible as far as the, the, the channel section is concerned. So, now the geometric approach we can assemble all these uh, elements uh, together so that the entire watershed can be represented by one or another kind of the, the elements. So, we assemble all these geometry elements by topographic characteristics like grades, direction of flow, uh, land use, vegetation, roughness and the channel network. So, that is uh, very clear from this figure. So, then uh, there are basically two methods uh, to do this assembly. So, first one is based on the topographic characteristics like different portions of watersheds are represented by the geometric elements and then one to one correspondence between a portion of watershed and the element representing it. So, we, we do this assemblage based upon the topographic characteristics and the second one is uh, the we can consider the geomorphic characteristics of the watershed. So, here we use this geomorphic characteristic to develop a network representation like this. So, that the model flow paths are analogous to the watershed flow paths. So, we can the assembly can be done either based upon the topographic characteristics or the uh, geomorphologic characteristics. So, as far as geomorphological characteristics are concerned we have to deal the quantitative landform analysis like a flowing water and associated mass gravity movements acting over long periods of time. So, how the flow is taking place 
and then uh, uh, associated mass gravity movements all these we have to consider and uh, this is responsible for development of surface geometry. So, a watershed can evolve according to the flow pattern what is happening within the uh, watershed. So, we have to assess uh, what kind of uh, variation is taking place within the uh, watershed. And then as far as geomorphological characteristics of watershed is concerned, uh, we have to systematically describe the watershed. So, a systematic description of watershed is required and geometry and uh, its stream channel system uh, we have to identify and uh, we have to measure the linear aspects of drainage network. So, how much is the, the length of the drainage system and then uh, like aerial aspects of the drainage basin uh, and then relief aspects or elevation aspects of the uh, channel network within the watershed. So, these are some of the important characteristics as far as the geomorphological uh, features of the uh, watershed. So, we will have detailed discussion as far as the linear aerial and uh, relief aspects of the uh, watershed is concerned. So, first let us look into the linear aspects of uh, drainage network. So, we can see that when we deal with a watershed, so this is a watershed or this is a watershed which I have drawn. So, the stream order means stream order is the indicates the degree of stream branching uh, with a watershed. So, you can see that this is if this is the main stream. So, you can see that there will be number of branching. So, the first order means there will not be any branch. So, unbranched tributary. So, you can see that these are all first branch where one is indicated that is the first branch. So, this original watershed is concerned this is a this blue line indicates the the first branch first order. Then second order. So, two or more first order. So, you can see that two or more first order will be keep on joining. So, this is so called a second order. So, this one uh, whatever is indicated in blue is the second order and third order means two or more second order streams are coming together. So, this is the third order as far as the stream order is concerned. So, like that nth order stream is formed by two or more stream of orders n minus oneth and the stream of lower order. So, that is the nth order of the stream. So, according to this uh, we can now have various uh, definitions like a uh, bifurcation ratio. So, bifurcation ratio is the ratio of number of stream of any order to the number of stream of the next lower order. So, if n u is the the order of the the watershed as far as the 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 watershed is concerned n u is the number of stream of youth order then the bifurcation ratio is n u divided by n u plus 1. So, where n u plus 1 is the number of stream of u plus 1 order. So, we have already seen the stream order. So, a uh, bifurcation ratio means uh, the n u divided by n u plus 1. So, uh, this uh, indicates say whether it is what is the way the watershed you know, say the nature of the watershed whether it is in steep or whether it is uh, mild is steep. So, this represents the effect on maximum flood discharge of the watershed. So, bifurcation ratio. Uh, based upon the stream order is one of the important indicator as far as the, the uh, maximum flood discharge to the outlet of the uh, watershed is concerned. Then uh, say bifurcation ratio and the principal order k of stream of watershed are known, then total number of streams of all orders of a drainage network we can identify as sigma i is equal to 1 to k, n u is equal to r b k minus 1 divided by r b uh, minus 1. So, this depends upon the bifurcation ratio and uh, the, the stream order. So, then another important definition as far as the linear aspect is concerned, it is so called the law of stream numbers. So, this relate the number of stream of order uh, u that means n u to bifurcation ratio and the principal order k. So, n u is equal to r b to the power k minus u. So, where r b is the bifurcation ratio and uh, n u is the the stream of order u. So, that is so called the law of stream numbers. So, these are some of the, the definitions which indicates what is the linear nature of the as far as the drainage is concerned, drainage pattern is concerned, how it is uh, changing from one watershed to another watershed. We can quantify in terms of this definition as far as the watershed nature is concerned. Then a stream length we can define as it reveals the characteristics of various components of drainage network and it is contributing surface area. So, if uh, if L u is the mean length of the channel of order u, 
So, L u bar is equal to sigma u is equal to 1 to n L u divided by n u, where n u is the uh, stream order of u. Uh, so, that is another definition stream length. Then uh, some other definitions like uh, stream length ratio. So, that is the which is the average length of uh, stream of any order to average length of stream of next order lower order. So, R L is equal to L u bar divided by L u uh, L u minus 1 bar. So, that is called stream length ratio. Then law of stream lengths that relates average length of stream order u to stream length of uh, ratio R L and the average length of first order streams. So, L u bar is equal to L 1 into R L to the power u minus 1. Then another definition like law of stream number and stream length stream lengths can be combined to yield uh, an equation for finding the total channel length. So, the total channel length we can identify based on the uh, law of stream number and the stream lengths. So, sigma i is equal to 1 to n l u is equal to l 1 bar into r b to the power k minus u into r l to the power u minus 1. So, these are some of the important linear aspects. So, we can quantify the drainage pattern as far as the length of the, the drainage pattern or the, the variations within the watershed by using the linear aspects. So, now let us look into aerial aspects of the watershed. So, this indicates the arrangement of aerial elements like a stream basin and inner basin. So, this is the stream basin and this is so called inner basin. So, stream basin means area of stream basin. So, this is the stream then what is the corresponding area. So, that is a stream basin. Then inner basin area is the contributing uh, surface flow directly to the stream of higher order. So, that is the definition of inner basin area. So, the total basin area uh, say A u of order u it is the total area projected on a horizontal plane contributing overland flow to the stream of given order plus all the tributaries of lower order. So, A u is equal to sigma is equal to 1 to n A 1 plus sigma is equal to 1 A 2 plus like that plus sigma is equal to 1 to A 0 2 plus sigma is equal to 1 A 0 3 like that. So, this represents the stream basin area as I mentioned here and this represents what is put in this red color that represents the inner basin area. So, the total basin area we can identify uh, like this. Then say very similar to the, the linear aspects. So, aerial aspects also we can have low stream areas. So, that is relates uneven area of basin of order u to the mean uh, drainage area of first order a 1 and the system a area rate r a. So, a u bar is equal to a 1 bar into r a to the power u minus 1 where r a is the average basin area of stream of one order to average area of basin of next lower order. So, this is analogous to the law of stream length as we have seen in the previous slides. And then we can have a relationship between the basin area and the stream length L is equal to m into a to the power n, where L is the stream length, a is the basin area and for the considered watershed m and n are some constants. Then based upon this area and say the drainage pattern we can have some uh, relationship as far as the drainage and discharge is concerned. So, the relationship between drainage and uh, drainage area and discharge can be represented as q is equal to j into a to the power m where j and m are some constants and uh, this m can vary from generally from 0 0.5 to 1. So, these are some of the, the, the as far as drainage and discharge is concerned. And then basin shape is the shape of projected surface area on the horizontal plane of uh, basin shape. So, it has significant impact effect on stream discharge characteristics as concerns and a basin can be characterized by some important uh, factors like a form factor, circulatory ratio and the elongation ratio. So, this definition we have already seen earlier, but within the context of basin shape uh, let us have a, a, a look again. So, the form factor means it is a ratio basin area to the square of basin length and then circulatory ratio is a ratio basin area to the area of circle uh, having equal perimeter as the perimeter of drainage basin A u by A c. So, this can vary from 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 depending upon the watershed. Then elongation ratio is the ratio of diameter of a circle d z having same area as basin to the maximum basin length L b m. So, this is the elongation ratio. So, this define the uh, so called basin shape. So, this aspect also uh, we have seen earlier. 
Now, another important aspect as far as the, the watershed is concerned, it is so called drainage density. So, this indicates the, the ratio of total length of all stream of all order within a watershed to the total area of the watershed. So, that we can be defined as drainage density can be defined as sigma i is equal to 1 to k, sigma r is equal to 1 to n l u divided by a u, where uh, say uh, this gives uh, say what is the, the total uh, the ratio of total length of all stream to uh, what, what is the area of the uh, watershed. So, the high value of the drainage density indicates a relatively high density of streams and there is a rapid st stream response will be there say for example, this watershed is concerned there can, may be the rapid stream response. Then constant of channel maintenance uh, it is the inverse of drainage density. So, we can define another term called constant of channel maintenance. So, that is E is equal to 1 by uh, drainage density. Then uh, also we another term as far as the drainage and discharge is concerned or drainage is concerned we can define stream frequency. It is the number of stream segments per unit area of the watershed. So, f is equal to i is equal to 1 to k n u divided by a k. So, where n u is the number of stream segments of uh, youth order and a k is the basin area of the principal order k. So, this is as far as the stream frequency is concerned. Now, the last aspect is so called relief aspect that is based upon the elevation. So, relief is the elevation difference between the reference points located in the drainage basin. So, maximum relief is the elevation difference between the highest and lowest point within the watershed and the maximum basin relief means elevation difference be before basin outlet and highest points located in the perimeter of the basin. So, that is so called a basin uh, maximum basin relief and uh, we can also a ratio called relief ratio that is the uh, h by l uh, where h is the uh, relief uh, horizontal distance on which relief was measured. L. So, this is the ratio of relief as to the uh, horizontal distance L. So, then also uh, as we defined earlier uh, say we can have a relative relief. So, that is h by p into 100 where h is the maximum basin relief and p is the uh, basin parameter. And then uh, so, according to the elevation the channel slope will be also we have to consider uh, the slope of a channel segment increases with increase in orders. And uh, say we can combine the law of stream and with respect to slope like this. So, it relates the average slope of stream of order u to average slope of first order stream and uh, stream slope ratio. So, s u bar is equal to s 1 bar into r s to the power uh, u minus 1. And another important uh, aspect which we can uh, use is called regardless number as far as watershed is concerned. It is a product of relief h and the drainage density. So, that is this is one of the important parameter which is used to characterize, characterize a watershed. So, R u is equal to the relief into drainage density h into d d. Then finally, another number called the geometric number also we can use that is h into d d that means the the ruggedness number divided by the the uh, say so called geometry it is called a geometric number that is the ratio h d d divided by the ground slope s g. So, then well before closing this lecture. So, when we deal with since we have now seen the various aspects like a linear aspect aerial aspects and then the 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 relief aspects. So, accordingly uh, the as far as watershed uh, variation is concerned uh, the as far as the relief variation is concerned we can have an analysis called hypsometric analysis. So, this gives uh, a relationship between the horizontal cross sectional area of watershed and its elevation. So, this is a curve plotted with the relative height h by h. So, on the y axis and relative areas a by a, uh, where h is the height of given contour, capital H is the relief, a is the cross sectional area of contour and uh, capital A is the total watershed area. So, this curve is so called a hypsometric curve. So, for the given watershed we can develop this hypsometric curve. This is very useful and to compare the elevation characteristics as far as the watershed is concerned. So, accordingly the slope can be identified and the runoff process also we can identify. So, slope of uh, hypsometry could be changed with the stages of watershed developments. So, then according to the development taking place within a watershed we can classify the watershed into three stages. One is so called a in equilibrium stage, second one is called equilibrium stage and the third one is called a monadnock stage. So, 
this in equilibrium stage is a young stage. So, that watershed is under development process. So, you can see that the watershed is still keep on evolving. So, various things are keep on happening. So, no equilibrium is reached. Second one is the equilibrium stage. So, this is the mature stage of watershed where steady state conditions are reached. So, all the parameters are concerned there is not much change is taking place. Then third one is so called the monad knock uh, stage. So, this isolated bodies of resistant rocks as you can see here from prominent hills are found above subdued surface. So, that is so called a stage called a monad knock stage. So, three important stages as far as the development of watershed in equilibrium, equilibrium and monad knock. So, this if you do a hypsometric analysis uh, we can identify how these stages will be varying. So, this figure shows this is taken from the book of Ranvi Singh. Uh, so, this is relative area A by A is plotted on uh, x axis and relative height on h by h. So, this top curve black color curve indicate in equilibrium stage and the middle one red color indicate equilibrium stage and the last one called monad knock uh, stage. So, accordingly we can identify. So, some of the important reference used for today's lecture uh, watershed planning and management by Reggie Singh and then some of the other references. So, as usual before closing the lecture say one tutorial question which you can attempt. So, critically analyze the important characteristics of a typical agriculture watershed. So, illustrate various parameters and try to quantify them and discuss the order of importance as far as the agriculture watershed is concerned. And few self evaluation questions like classify the various watershed characteristics and its importance in watershed management, describe different methods of geometric representation of watersheds. Then uh, describe linear aspects of watershed and its importance in a geomorphological study of watershed. Then discuss relief aspects of watershed and its uh, geomorphological uh, importance in geomorphological study. And what is hypsometric analysis of watershed? So all these questions, if you go through the lecture, uh, so all these things we have discussed. And some assignment questions like what are the important watershed factors to be considered in watershed management? In watershed analysis, what are the important channels of geomorphology and parameters to be considered? Illustrate the geomo geometric representation of watershed step by step, then describe the aerial aspects of watershed and its importance in geomorphological study, and what are the different stages of watershed developments. So, all these questions you can uh, get answered when you go through this today's lecture. Then, uh, finally, one unsolved problem. So, for your watershed where you are living, you can identify the various characteristics and then list them in order of importance. Then analyze the linear aspects of the watershed, analyze the aerial aspects and relief aspects. So, you can collect various data related to elevation area, channel length, slope etcetera. And then you can make a, a say a matrix which illustrate the importance of each characteristics in the uh, watershed management plans. So, in today's lecture we were discussing about the various important watershed characteristics. So, in the next lecture we will be discussing the watershed uh, delineation and uh, various methodologies. So, uh, this is the, the module on watershed modeling. Thank you.